sacred land of great cultural significance. The TMT clearly breaks state law in its violation of conservation district criteria and represents a large threat to surrounding communities given that it will produce toxic and chemical waste. Thus, we the undersigned write with a sense of urgency to demand that the UC divest from the construction of the TMT. The development of the TMT is the latest iteration of a settler colonial project of de development and exploitation of Mauna Kea. The first general use permit to build a telescope on Mauna Kea was granted to the University of Hawaii in 1968. The first telescope was built in 1970. In 1983, the Mauna Kea Complex Development Plan was approved by the Hawaii State Government. And from 1983 to 2002, 13 more telescopes were installed. Kanaka Ma'oli, the indigenous people of Hawaii, were not consulted in this long and gradual process of developing Mauna Kea. In, two er, in 2010, the TMT was proposed, and in 2015, constructed was slated to begin, therefore, or thereby pr prompting resistance on Mauna Kea, which led to 23 arrests of the Kia. 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 <coughs> on April 2nd, 2015. In response to the continued assaults on life, land, and sovereignty of both Mauna Kea and the, I'm sorry, and help me. Haleakala. Kanaka Ma'oli continue to put their bodies on the line against development and desecration. The number of Kanaka Ma'oli and allies arrested has grown to 91 at the time of this writing. The continued criminalization of Kanaka Ma'oli and the development of Mauna Kea and other sacred summits 
lands stolen from the Kingdom of Hawaii in an 1893 overthrow and an 1898 annexation cannot be removed from genealogy of violence against Kanaka Maoli and the disposition of their lands. United States Public Law 103 through 150, also known as the Apology Resolution signed by President Bill Clinton in 1993, recognizes the violence done to Kanaka Maoli who never relinquished their lands or sovereignty. The state of Hawaii administrative rules on, conservative, or on cons conservation districts clearly states the proposed land use will not cause substantial adverse impact to the existing natural resources within the surrounding area, community, or region. However, given that the TMT permit application includes tanks for water waste, the capacity of which is in the thousands of gallons and requires the transport of chemical waste up and down the up and down the mountain like the livelihood likelihood of spills that will endanger both the natural resource of the mountain as well as greater community is high further in acknowledging only four sites of impact the tmt and state of hawaii denies the indisputable indisputable fact that there are hundreds of historic and traditional cultural sites that exist on Mount Akea. Historic sites, fine spots, and traditional cultural properties in the UH management area. It is inexcusable that the University of Hawaii has submitted a, an application for the conservation district use permit on behalf of the TMT when construction so clear, clearly violates the state's administrative rules especially since the University of Hawaii is also the designated manager of the Mauna Kea Science Reserve. This conflict of interest cannot be ignored, and it goes without saying that science is not above the law. For, the, for these reasons, the TMT cannot be built on Mauna Kea. Okay. Oh. <laughs> university students what we're asking is that the um, the sciences here recognize this importance and this message from the students we're going into the Department of Astronomy to deliver the letter of um, the students to the School of Astronomy no, you can sign, you can sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Hui, can, can Auntie sign? She's an alumni. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what happens? Yeah, you go, go, up, go up in front with the students. You're an alumni, yeah. All right, alumni of the university. Okay. Alumni of students. Okay. We're just kind of, we'll just kind of get up fifth floor, fifth floor. So whoever can get in, get in. <laughs> okay, we'll meet everybody else up there. Okay, mahalo you guys. Oh, you guys are awesome. You guys want to say hi to everybody? That's what I say. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Be proud of me. <laughs> We're proud of you. Did somebody push five? Is it five? Oh, it's five? Yeah. oh yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, okay. All right. I got you. Okay, here we go. Department of Astronomy. someone who is a descendant of Kanaka Maoli. Mm -hmm. I am honored to give this statement to you. Thank you so and much. I will definitely pass it along to the management here and I appreciate your position. <laughs> um, I'm Oh. <laughs> Did you want to sign the document? Oh, you want, you want to sign it? One of our oh, members is going to be easier to sign over here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mahalo very much. We thank you, thank you very much for for um, receiving the letter for us. 
and you know, our, our, we hope that it goes with the best of intentions and the best, uh, you know, and is received in, in the best way. And again, our message here is to make science right. So it's to align science with the protection of indigenous peoples and sacred places. So that's that's the main thing that we're here to um, to deliver, not only in the protection of Mauna Kea, mm -hmm. but also in the protection of sacred lands everywhere, including the one that we're standing on. I, know, I, I fully appreciate what you're saying and, and the position of that's not to our management. And I hope uh, equitable compromises are, are, can be worked out. I'm just uh, admin staff here, so that's all I can do. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I hear where you are, you're coming from. Thank you. Mahalo, mahalo. mahalo. Don't oh, kill the message. So much right. <laughs> our, our management staff is listed on our website. and. Um, so maybe that will get a response because it is a crisis for new people. I hear you. I hear you. I'm sure that they'll respond or as appropriate. Hopefully soon. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. Is there anyone from management staff that's in the office currently? Um, I'm not sure. Is there a way for you to check? Um, actually, no, not right now. Sorry. I will be glad to take the letter. Okay. Oh, maybe have someone else who's yeah. willing to take the letter. Oh, thank you. What's your name? Really? My name is Carla. I stand corrected. Have you already accepted this on their behalf? I did. Great. Well, we have then both too. accepted it. Um, I will give it a read over if that's okay. Um, thank you. Uh, yes, I will read over it first and then I will make sure that it gets to the appropriate people. Um, we have a chair for our department and um, his name is Alex Filipenko. And I will decide if this is something that should go to him um, once I read it. What would make you decide it shouldn't go to him? Um, I don't know. First of all, it's, it's very strange to be videoed when I've just met you all. Is it possible that we could have a very quick conversation about what this, the background of this is before sure. I start yes. saying whether or not yeah. I can take it to anyone because mm -hmm. I feel kind of on the spot and that makes me feel <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. So, did so, you hear the student who brought it in? Which I, I literally just walked out oh, of the meeting. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. 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 so I'm Bria Tennyson. I am a Are student we? and uh, sorry, also sorry, sorry, a representative of North Norway from the infamous Native Hawaiian population Hawaii. And why we're here today is um, we are here to express our discontent in the UC's uh, support of the construction of the TMT, which is on sacred land. But on top of that, it is also um, detrimental to the water source that is providing clean water for the entire island. So this letter is signed by several other UC students. And I really, really hope that you would look it over sure. because not only does it um, impact the people in Hawaii, but also the students as well. It's something that's being done in their name, and I'm not sure that, that they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, and is it possible if you can leave your contact information? Oh, filming again um, with Mark, just so that if I want to chat with you further about this, that I have a connection to you, so that you know when you get an email from me that okay, I'm asking yes, you I can do that. Yeah, yes. let's keep the communication open. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just very excited to see. I'm like, are we all still in service? Thank you so much. No, for, no, and yeah. thank you for doing this very peacefully and, and kindly in our offices. Hopefully, you guys will all have a very nice day. For the, for those who, who who know it, let's do a, a let's do an ehomai for them to to yes. for to um you know to bring in the, the the good blessings of our ancestors to that you can carry those forth with you. Mm -hmm. E
One of the things that we would like to share with you is that uh, we are currently, uh, some of the people that are here are helping organize and protect the Mauna. And we come here with all of our aloha and all of our respect um, as aloha kealo, face to face, so that you can see in us and feel us and hear us, that we mean no harm to you, you mean no harm to this university, but the actions that your university is doing is bringing harm to our people. Mm. And we come here bearing a message from the people who will be. Some of us will be there. And the state of Hawaii is currently uh, looking at commissioning millions of dollars to arm police officers and doe care and sheriffs to clear, to brutalize us so that they can build this TMT. The telescope, the 30 meter telescope. And which UC Berkeley is a part of, is a, is yeah. a. Yeah. And we, and we will, just like we bring aloha here, we will bring aloha to the Mauna. Uh, and, but there will be others in your names, not your names individually, but the names of UC Berkeley who will come to brutalize our peoples. And so what we want to do, part of what we are here to do is to put a face to that, you know. We are healers, we are teachers, we are singers, we are mothers, we are Kanaka Maoli, and we are coming to you, you know, with all honesty and all kapua aloha to ask you to see us, to feel us, and to know that no matter what they say about us when we go to the mauna, that we do never, we don't bring the violence. But if this moves forward, the way that the state of Hawaii is preparing for it, they will hurt us. And Haleakala Kai Preas stood peacefully to protect that mauna. And he was thrown brutally to the ground and stepped on on his neck until he could no longer breathe and he had a concussion. And to this day, he still suffers from neurological damage while in prayer. Mm -hmm. He was brutalized while in prayer. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what they're looking to do here to us, to many of the people who are standing here, because yes. those same people will be standing on a mountain mm -hmm. and many, many more who have no choice. Yes. Well, I do thank you all for coming and expressing yourself. I think that's really important, and I actually believe that that's one of the foundations of UC Berkeley is to be able to express themselves, especially peacefully. And I want you all to know that I do see you, and I thank you for coming and sharing this with me, and that I will plan to read it myself and then pass it along to the people that do need to see it. And I hope that that will be um, something that can alleviate you just from in terms of our responsibility here, and I've also asked if you would leave your contact information so we can carry on the dialogue further. You know, so my understanding is that this tower here is, um, holds many of our ancestral bones inside of there. Our uh, remains are there that because UC Berkeley is so disrespectful, our ancestors are held in captive both at Campanile and underneath the women's uh, swimming pool where the, um, the, yeah, the women's swimming pool by the Hearst Museum. And so uh, UC Berkeley has had a history of desecrating indigenous people's sacred sites and indigenous people's remains and so uh, my ancestors thousands and thousands of them uh, remain here and so uh, you in this structure some of them in this structure some of them at the um, underneath this women's swimming pool so 
um, just go by and, and quietly say hello to the ancestors here and to know that their strength is holding us up together today as well. Um, and it's good to know that uh, <clears throat> as long as they are not forgotten, they won't forget us. And so they will protect us and take care of us in the work that we're doing to protect our sacred sites. And so, yeah. Mahalo. Should we stop? We have time. We have a. We'll, we'll, let's take a moment to just blow the poo for sure. for them. Yep. Yes. Yeah. We should honor them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, for those of you that didn't hear when uh, we were talking up ahead here, so UC Berkeley holds thousands of our ancestral remains, and many uh, uh, we've been told that some of them are here uh, in the Campanile. Some of them are in uh, underneath the, uh, swim, the women's swimming pool and lockers and for thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And so UC Berkeley has had a history um, of destroying sacred sites of indigenous people. And so we're stopping here right now to pay respects to the ancestors that are here on this land, the sacred site that we are on. UC Berkeley was built on our village sites, uh, Strawberry Creek, runs through this area. And so I was telling my sisters, as long as we remember our ancestors, our ancestors protect us and they remember us. And so we're gonna send uh, 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 some music out to them to remind them that we are here so they, they can remember us. And, um, and just pay our respects in that way before we head down to Sprout. Ona kumua kua paui hanauia ika po ika laiku e amai e kai mai ona kumua liia paui hanauia ika po ika laiku. E a mai, ke kai mai. Ona vela wali i ka mau i hanau i a i ka po i ka la i ku. E a mai, ke kai mai. song to the ancestors. This is an Ohlone song, sacred, honoring sacred fire, because that's how we connect with our ancestors. We connect through sacred fire. They, they work with sacred fire. They gave their medicine to sacred fire, and their prayers were sent up to Creator. So I know they hear us. I know they're here with us when we like sacred fire. It brings them close. It brings them near. So
bring you home, ancestors. We'll bring you home. Many blessings to all my relations.
ku of course means to stand and all of these have a variety of meanings. So ku means to stand, kia'i means to be a guardian, a steward, protector. Mauna of course is our mountain. So um, I'll tell you a little story of how we uh, put that word together because you won't find it in the dictionary as kukia imauna. No matter how you look in there, you'll find three separate words, but you don't find them together. So once upon a time, I think it was 2012, we had come down from the summit and we said, we better write a new chant. A chant that would tell ourselves, just in our own family, just around the living room, how we need to stand and to ask our ancestors to um, to really abide with us and lead us and just let us be their, their vessel for what they needed to have done from my own ohana. So four of us got together at my house and Kaleno uh, Hea Cleghorn, Kelly Ibertoman, myself and my daughter Habani. And when we got together, we just said, you know how you get together for study group? It was like a study group. And we said, let's look in the dictionary for all the words that begin with K, like strong words, so that we would stand strong. And we started to look for these K words. And as we were looking in the dictionary, um, Kavani just said it out loud. She said, what about Kukia Imauna? Stand as a guardian, as strong as a mountain. Mm. And Whoa. we just said, oh, <laughs> you got something there. <laughs> and we um, immediately put it into this chant of words that began with K. Words that began with the word Ku words that would tell us to uh, stand strong. So um, I I'll do it for you, if, if you like. Yeah. Um, I'll do this chant for you. Uh, that at the very end says, why are we doing this? Why are we calling on you? And the answer is in the last line, because the Mauna is still sacred. That is why we do what we do. The Mauna is sacred, and that's the last line of the chant. And I'm really missing my three others, and uh, I'm missing my daughters who would be chanting with me. And uh, when you are standing on the mountain and you are calling out to each other, especially when you're making a stand and you hear a caller from on the top saying Hu kia imauna and everybody stands stronger and says Hu kia imauna it's just a, like a confirmation it's an inspiration it's like you know stand strong as a mountain okay stand strong as a mountain i mean there's nothing more just beautiful because you can't see each other sometimes because the mist is, is just, you know, Lilinoi just comes in and we can't see each other, but we can hear each other saying, stand strong is a mountain. And we sing, Kaulani, Kuhaka, Kau ke awa vai ku aku papa ku ku kai makani kamakani o kalani kamakani ula kamakani o nuai ho o hei hei ho o hei hei ke aka kapu ke aka ku ano ano ke aka ku kahe kahe ku kia imau na ku anu e nu e. E kuku pa u e ku ho ho e ku i ke ku e ku kaulani a ku a ku mau ka manala a ka pua wa ke e e e e e e e
so honored to be here. With the Ohana from this land, the Ohana, those who speak, that they are still here and that we are still here. Mm. That is the magic. We have not vanished. And, and the songs still come. Thank you, Richie. Your song, the sacred smoke, for your being because in 1893, a deposed queen, Lio Kalani, prophesied that one day, if not in the time of the oppressor, in the time of their children, that the curse shall fall upon the people, the sins of the father. In the fourth generation, which is now that there would be such a disregard that even though you would carry a sign and you would call to them to stop, they see it, but they can make no sense of it in Hawaii. The people march, the prisons are full. We lay on the sidewalks in the streets and we listen to the traffic. And we cry out, we call out, but still, they can hear, but they do not have a sense of what it is. And that's why we are here. We have to come out. What was it that ended the apartheid, began the process of eliminating apartheid from South Africa in the 1960s? It took people going out from there and sharing it. And to have your kokua, which is your assistance, is what our prayers are. Not just for us. Because the lava that has come out from the center of the earth. Imagine Hawaii being the seed in the womb. And for a while it grew as a child in the top of the womb. And as the millennia went on, it came down. But at the center of it, the people, the umbilical cord, is Hawaii, the sacred breath of life, the fire of life, and the water of life. And that's why we are here remind you of that because that land the lava that has come has gone under the sea and it actually has come up and is connected my name is Kelo uh, I am I am honored to be here on the secret this Aina I'm honored to be a part of the Mauna Kea movement. It's a movement of aloha. It's a movement about moving aloha. But I want to tell a couple of things, some messages. Um, I, I come from traditional star people. Um, and so some of the ceremony that we do on Mauna Kea is probably what the archaeologists call Proto-Polynesia. What that means though is uh, before their, their time. <laughs> uh, it's our, it is about connecting to the, the time of the universe. The ancient time, ways of keeping time are keeping track of the processional, the, the, what do they call the procession of the equinoxes. For us it's called the Polohiva time. And that keeps us in our prophecies. When you lose track of time, the time of the great year and the procession, you lose track of 
your space also. In Hawaiian, there's only one word for both time and space. And we've come through a huge time, a huge time miracles, actually. And that's what I want to share, because the miracles are all around us. So we keep track of that time. And just part of the story is that where they want to place the, the large telescope is exactly in our view plane where the sun goes, where the procession is marked. So it will impact our ability to continue our cultural and religious practice. Why we have to keep track of those times? Because what we're living under now is not the time, the real time, we're living under the time of empire. And so we need to bring back the old time. All the ancient cultures studied this time. So we were no different. I had one of my astronomer friends say to me, Keloha, how did you guys know the earth was round before we did? And I, was, I started laughing because I thought I was joking. And then he goes, no, no, really? And I said, oh. I said, well, because we sailed in and we didn't fall off. <laughs> and he said, no, I'm serious. And I said, okay. It's because we understood there was a little equator. And he said, well, how do you know that? That's a part of our creation story. Papa and Wakea, when they were connected through the Pico. The sky, father, the earth, mother connected. And when you draw that line out, that's our celestial equator because Wakea is from my family tradition, Orion, which rises due east and sets due west like so. So then he says to me, and you know, he's, he was a very good man. He wasn't being terse or sarcastic. He said, well, surely you don't expect me to believe it's based on myth. And I said, well, I don't, I have to think about that because it's our creation story. Is it any more mythical than Adam and Eve? And then we had to like, oh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Um, no, all of the creation stories, including Adam and Eve, all of the righteousness within them, we recognize and honor. Anyways, about those miracles, we're in that time and we need to continue to believe in miracles, the miracles of divinity within us and upon the earth. You know, we're here because of the TMT, and therefore mahalo kia for the TMT that brought us here. But why we're really here is because we as a people all are together on this planet, and we need to raise the standard of aloha. And everyone always says, Kilo, what do you mean by raise the standard of Aloha? Is that like a flag? And I said, no, what I mean is we need to do better. Because it's not enough to be Aloha. And by the way, Aloha is a state of mind, right? Not a place, not a word. It's a, a state of being. And so moving it means when you are in it, when you move, it moves too. And so, and a lot of people think when we were talking about Kapu Aloha and Mauna Kea, they said, oh, Auntie, I can't, I can't do it. I'm angry, I can't be Kapu Aloha. <laughs> and true, if you can't be, that's okay. You can stay down, you know, and pray for us that we can continue to be. Because um, it requires all level of truth. And even that anger is a truth we need to recognize and not be afraid of. But also not be afraid to, to, 
to stand and speak truth. I mean, you cannot have aloha without truth. Yo. Yes, sir. And then, then I had these wonderful people from Berkeley come and tell me, we get it, aloha. You guys are speaking truth to power. And I said, no. no. <laughs> And they said, what you mean? Of course you, you're speaking truth to power, Kelha. And I said, well, actually, I don't see them as power. Right? Power is the wind, the ocean, that great white shark, deep blue, all of the animals and all of the life on earth. That's power. A bunch of poor holy men <laughs> talking to me is not power. But I too have to step into that poor holy man's world and ask him to join with us in a miracle. So that is our prayer today. So we're here also to talk to, to the empires of higher learning and higher education, to join indigenous people everywhere. There are indigenous people. Isn't everyone indigenous somewhere? We need to raise that standard, raise that vibration, stay in that aloha and say we need to do better and we expect you to do better and we will continue our stand until you do because we have to to survive you know even the rocks and stones in this thing use the form of sacred geometry to create it. That sacred geometry is all around us. That's what um, activate and animate and make harmony on the planet. But sometimes, you know, our humanness takes us away from it. And then you know because you can feel disharmony, dis dissidence, cognitive dissidence when you hear the lie. So you know it inside. And so this is part of the message that I think we're coming to share and learn from. It actually came from this Aino in the dream. From the and bring messages. We took care of a, a, a whale that was injured. And in our ceremony, we have to ask it if it had a message to bring for ourselves or our people, our family, or the world, because they are the messengers. And the message came repeatedly in a design that I kept drawing repeatedly. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I heard, and it was, Kamawi's voice saying, we have come here to help you remember when we were one. And that's the message that the animal world is bringing to us. We, they're around us all the time and we don't even look at them, acknowledge them. But they're calling out to us, they're waiting for us to say, I see you. Mr. Crow over there. And then Mr. Crow says, I see you too, Keloha, and this is what you need to do. And so that's the that's part of that message that came to me just landing on this Aina. This sacred Aina is so powerful. And so that is the important message that I thought I needed to tell you about <laughs> because they told me. And our stand on Mauna Kea is about moving aloha 
in all sacred places. You know, we had, sorry, we told them that sacred places are important because can I ask for your help? Not only to indigenous people, but to the world, because um, sacred places hold the city of the planet. Food, snacks and, and that's why they became sacred. And so they could build there, but it will never be good for them. Could, could I ask your guys In a way, we're, to we're here to tell them food for people, and especially start with kill. that it will not be good for them. Yeah. Just hand it up. Because when you yeah. take yeah. away yeah. that mana, offer people you are manaless. Okay, thank you. Okay. So we're here to say, we don't want you to be monoliths. We don't want to be desecrated. We don't want our mana to be desecrated. But more important, when you desecrate it, you become monoliths. And then you mean nothing in the world without mana. So we, we hold that compassion for them. We pray for them. Because they too are just like us. And so when we find that, that place of aloha, and we find that state, and all things align from the heavens. We have to wash our hands of that inequity. We, we as indigenous people have carried the wrongs of the past of our history for the occupier and the colonizer. And it's time for us to free ourselves and to be free and to help them be free too. Yo. It's just time. And you know, all of the battles that went on brought us to this sacred thing. It's time for the miracles that are right now, right here, now. And that's why we need to be here. Uncle Liko said it. It's the time. And so we start, and everyone awakens and moves the aloha. Conspire with Papa Hana Moku, yeah. Earth Mother. We choose her, we choose her, we choose her. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have a favorite sign. I've been carrying this sign for over a thousand days. This is the you guys gotta be in the picture. Oh my god, days we are holding the Mauna oh, yeah. just in this present. I'd like you to give your attention to Malia. I'd like to feature her a, a little bit because this is an actual Kia'i who's been, who's put her body on the line, on the Mauna, at Standing Rock, you know, in many, many different places. And she's awesome. And um, we need to hear her voice. So please, um, you know, mahalo to Malia. Mahalo to Auntie over here. I also wanted to really say mahalo piha to our Palestinian sisters in struggle uh, for helping to get this all uh, together. It was really, really powerful to see all of our our people on this aina come together and protect our sacred mauna and uh, and chant kukia imauna as we walk down and all the university students kind of looked at us in an uncomfortable way. But um, yeah, so mahalo piha to you guys, PYM. Thank you guys so much. It's a mahalo. to stand with you guys. And we're here, I, I should say, we're, we're largely here today because Diala uh, assisted so much. And, um, and the Palestinian Youth Organization assisted so much in this whole thing. So, mahalo. And so many other people, Cole, Kat, um, oh my gosh, there's too, there's too many of you guys to name, but you know who you are, and mahalo, mahalo. Ayo. Um, what is Thank you guys for coming out. Seriously, it means, it means the world to us. We're, you know, one of the most geographically isolated places in the world, surrounded by physical form, means means the world to us as Kanaka Maori. 
and Polynesian people as a whole. Um, this movement has been going on for nine or so years, um, but the four or so that I've been a part of it has been the most influential movement I've ever, ever gotten the honor to be a part of. Uh, to see the evolution of our people go from not not necessarily asleep, but you know, we feel the eha that that we that we've been feeling for our, from our kupuna, from our ancestors when they were overthrown. We feel the eha of our aina, of our land. Um, we cry out way because we can we can really feel our land crying. But when Mauna Kea came up. You could see that light, their bowl of light, it many times. You could see all of us from Hawaii, from that Pai Aina, Mahalo Piha for um, really coming out and showing support because numbers show solidarity and knowledge is power and power is change. So, yeah, Ooh. Mahalo, guys. I stand here as testament to the intersections of science, religion, humanity, colonizer and colonized. I am Kanako Maoli, Japanese and Polish. That means that movements like these tear me apart sometimes because I don't know what side I should stand on. So I am driven by my ancestors to choose right, to do what is right, to make the choice that is what's best, not for me, not only for my children, but for my children's children as well. And not just for the Kanakamooli that I identify with, but also with the Japanese, with the natives of other cultures, the Japanese, the Polish, the Asians, all demographics, all ethnic groups. When my grandmother, who was full Kanakamooli, was growing up in Hawaii, she was on the Big Island, she went to her father and said, I want to go to college. And back then, it was unheard of for Kanakamooli to strive for what at that time was seen as only what Hawaiians do or what Asians do. And so my great-grandfather told her, it's not for you. And so she carried this idea that she was not good enough, was not wanted in spaces like this institution. And she had children and she gave us love and life. And I grew up carrying that idea that I was not good enough. I did not belong in institutions like these. Only that's not true anymore. We are here. We are taking up space and we are not just grateful for that space anymore, but we are demanding that we are recognized on equal grounds. We belong here and as such, our demands and our requests. Of what is important to us equal just as much as those who are seeking greater knowledge to advance, to advance the human race. I honor that and I respect that desire of theirs. But not on Mauna Kea. that is too precious for us. Oh. And not just for the Kanakamaoli, but for all those who see the aina, the land, as being where they come from. For the diasporic Chinese, the diasporic Asians, the Japanese, who are on Native American soil, they have a homeland. And they deserve just as much as the Caucasians, 
who have come from Europe, they have homelands as well. I want to respect that as well. But there are times when I need to demand to please honor our Aina, honor our people, honor our request. And so now I am in this institution as a UC Berkeley student, not only here to change the conversation from within, or to take up space and show the world that we belong here in these spaces, but also to learn how to work in partnership with those who may not identify as I do, or who may not see why this is so important to me. And because I stand at the intersections, I'm willing to listen, if you are willing to listen as well. And I would like to ask for partnership of those who do, maybe don't quite understand why we are doing this, why this is not as important. And I want to thank those who have come before me, my ancestors, those who are doing the work now to have your lands be taken away from you, to have them desecrated by the colonizers. Um, and so we feel with you and we fight alongside you um, to liberate all of our lands. Um, and together one day, inshallah, we will all be walking on liberated lands. So, so thank you from myself, from my Palestinian brothers and sisters, from the Palestinian Youth Movement, which is the organization that I organize with. Um, we stand with you and shukran, mahalo. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. Is a poet. Oh, she would like to oh, share yeah. if that's okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Are you okay with holding the mic? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Mahalo, Violet. Violet. I just want to echo the gratitude um, to all the protectors and all the people that came from Hawaii to come uh, and who have been doing this work and protecting, um, protecting Mauna Kea and their land and their sacred land and their people um, from the violence colonization and the colonization. And I think of my poems um, as ways to speak to my mother who's only in the mornings. My love comes from Feruz begging the wind to take her home. Reading love as if it is wind. My love comes from wind, as in the wind that takes me home. From Baba singing Um Kulthum only when, only when showering at the A when Omri Abla Krah. My love comes from Um Kulthum telling him she has lost too much before loving him. Reading love as if it is lost. My love comes from loss, as in the loss that takes me home before you ask me where my love comes from. First you have to ask me what kind. And I will tell you love means 11 different things in Arabic, meaning I can't answer in English, meaning I don't have the language to love. Yeah, I only know the Arabic word for hope. And I always mistake it for her. Non type in me, always mistaking love for war before you ask me where my love comes from first you have to ask me where I come from and I'll point at my mother and my grandmother at all my mothers I come from a long line of chasing deserts with toes I have no no home but the stars hearts that down the Jordan River from somewhere my grandmother my grandparents walk only at night only in dreams looking for stars to call home finding only one sewed in blue with the bruised skin of the dead when I hold my grandparents hands I notice their palms how much land they have carried, I notice their toes, how they ache for something else. I see them only at night, only in dreams, following maps hidden in the bends of their bodies, to ground lifted from beneath their toes, ground that opens its arms, kisses them on both cheeks like an old amto, haven't seen her in a while, and beds itself in the space between their toes like it doesn't want to be left behind again, whispers to the grooves in their skin, Ahlan wa sahlan, hadal ard baitkum, hadal sama baitkum. When you ask me where my love comes from, I will tell you it comes from there. Underneath the wall, before the blue star sewed itself into the sky there. Home to a long line of Palestinian women home. I come from the womb of lost land and buried safety. Dear sweat, strength, wisdom, from dirty toes aching for something else. Searching for stars and ash in the soil. Digging into new dirt, forcing it into home. Thank you. Loa, can I put you on the spot? <laughs> Come on, Loa, <laughs> please. Hi. 
Can I put you on the spot? Yeah, what do you want me to do? Just to say something okay. about the, 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 what? Okay, yeah, mahalo lalani. No <laughs> okay, aloha, thank you so much. You know, as you know, we're, we're, um, we're, you know, to use a beautiful Hawaiian word, ohana. We're the ohana, ohana from, from the Pacific. So so much gratitude, so much love we have for Karina Gold and the movement that, you know, that she's part of with her ancestors and then yeah. also seeing all those Aloha Aina protectors here who are here to, with the call with Mauna Kea. You know, Kea Aloha, we just came from Hawaii. All the protectors are here because of Karina's leadership. She has called them and they know, they can recognize when it's time when other indigenous people come, when the other relatives come from Hawaii. They answer the call. Hapua, they answer the call. And of course, with Chief, who we love so much. Where is Chief? Okay, yeah, Chief, I thought you were eating like a burrito. Yeah. Hey, um, so just, um, you know, I just want to say, when you made the call, you know, Pua, Laulani, uh, Kalama, and Ke Aloha, when you made the call for us, you know everybody, um, I'm Tongan. I'm from Tonga. It's just oh, Tonga. When we hear when we heard the call, we just knew that it's time to come and see all oh, the English language, you know? It's time to come and see the relatives. It's you know what you could also say the aunties. It's to come to see the love of your lives. We have come from Hawaii. So that's why we're here. You know, they call this a protest, but for us indigenous people, the protest is a, it's, I mean, our bodies are a protest. This is how we live our life. And sure, here on, here on this land, you know, this, this, on this Ohlone land that is occupied, they call it a protest. But it's just to us, for us to come back home. So I thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. My sister Fui, who's not here, has taught me so much how to walk in the indigenous ways. I guess that's why Creator brought us in the same family. I, I love her and my grandmothers and my grandfathers. Thank you so much, Chief, for coming here to be with us here on the Lonely Land. It's always, our hearts are so full. And uh, I'm gonna go sit down now, everybody. <laughs> but I just wanted to say, I mean, I have to make a shout out for also, you know, when I heard, and Uncle Liko, so good to have you here with us. We know that when we see you, our hearts just jump for joy. We cannot sit down. We're so happy to see you. And so I just wanted to say when I heard you were coming, I had to call, you know, the young people, like, like Nisians United Chabot College, um, the VASA program, CCSF at SFSU, at Cal, you know, at KL, and, and Bria, and, and Thomas, and Samantha, Angel. And I want to give a big shout out to Nijin's Mystic from Chippewa College, because they're my young tongue sisters. To Delphi, at least you have who like, you know, Giovanna, Andrea, even their good friend. You know, and I, um, you know, um, sis, is it okay that we, we like to give you a, a gift? Um, first of all, we'd like to give you some gifts, or maybe we'll do it at the MCC. But Dalfa and Lisi, can, can, this is a good time to share a song with the aunties. I can have. How get it tiny? No. And yeah, these, these sisters, you know, and we can see Angel, Samantha, and Bria. Um, we're thankful to be here. <laughs> we're gonna sing a song, I'll do my best. One of our traditional hymns, it's called um, Himita Fa, and it talks about the ocean and how the ocean takes all of our sins and forgives us because of how much, uh, how deep the ocean has, how deep the ocean's love is for us. So this is in our, um, in Tongan. Eki ko e o fa ko e moana lo lo to be agu o na lo kia e kungai a ngai a be agu. 
fogo É a cua, o fio, o fio, o fio É cucó, é cucó, vim Cotó, a cotó, a pé É cucó, vim, cotó, a pé É que back to the beginning so for in in in, um, in solidarity with with our brothers and sisters over there fighting right now to protect Mauna Kea the beautiful mountain the beautiful sacred mountain um, you know I want our mountains our mountains are already connected they, they, we, 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 our, our mountain goes down and it touches the Pacific Ocean your mountain goes down and it touches the Pacific Ocean they're sisters they vibrate with each other. So I would like for us to sing this and, and bring that bring that vibration together, bring those two mountains together, those two sisters together to reunite and to stand strong and to, and to, and to help, us, help us stand strong. Brothers and sisters standing strong at Mauna Kea, just stand strong. Like that beautiful words that you said, I'll, I'll, I'll have to stand strong. Umaya, 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 weo, weo. Umaya, 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 weo, weo, oh. Umaya, 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 weo, weo. Umaya, 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 weo, weo, oh. Umaya, 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 weo. Free to, 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 we got sacred fire here, and we're, we're all in the family here around sacred fire. We got the tobacco here, so please feel free to take some tobacco and, and honor the sacred fire if you want to with your prayers. And, and um, so, this is this is for all of us right here. So, thank you, Grandfather Fire, for lighting our way, connecting us with the ancestors. So, who? Many blessings to all my relations. Oh my goodness. So blessed. I feel so blessed to have to have um, to have the, the blessings of, of this land of Karina. Oh my goodness. You know, Richie, Chief Kaleen. Would would um would you folks like to say anything? I just wanted to say you know all of the things that we're planning and everything that as leaders and as visionaries and as people connected to 
the land and the directions that we take is that we all have to be careful. We all have to understand that the government is not our friend. Discriminatory tactics to say, you people are not even worth it to come in and be here and oh. shake my head. And I'm not even gonna listen to you because I'm not even the right guy that all of these vibrations are coming on to. And when I deliver this letter to the right guy, how do you know? You know, he'll put it in his box. He'll pick it up tomorrow or next week. But these are the same kind of tactics and the same kinds of things that happen. And so I just wanna make sure that, you know, we're aware of it. We're aware of these things taking place. And we know that there are plants in the government and in the You need to be aware. You need to be perking up. You know, when they come along and they're talking against me, or they're talking against Pua, they're talking against Karina, they're, they're talking against the action in a way that really doesn't fit. And they're starting to split people from other people. And it's a behavior that happens over and over again. And you know what? They are nice as pie. They are the nicest, most helpful people that you can't hardly believe that they would be doing that. But they do. And so I just want to put those things out there for you guys because, you know, uh, we are going to be <laughs> um, criminals. This is what this is all about, is that they are going to criminalize us for standing for our sacred places. And as that happens, you know, I already have charges against me, felony charges, where people are going, oh, wait a minute, oh, hold it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can stand with her anymore because she has these charges. But all of us, because Karina has got this shell man down here. And I am in full support of that shell now because that is something that is a doorway to helping indigenous peoples establish themselves and if Berkeley can't do that then there's probably not a town that could and we can probably wait another 25 50 years before that happens and so whatever you can do to help the shell mound and the uh, direction that the Ohlone people are taking with that and and believe me within their own group they have those people who are splitting and trying to split the Ohlone direction on the shell mound. And you need to be aware of that because right now we have full trust and allegiance to Karina. And so some people coming in and talking against that direction, you have to know that they are coming from someplace else. They're not in the good space. They're not wanting for all of the people, even though they sound like they are. And we have to make sure that we don't get sidetracked with that kind of thing happening within the group because as we get going uh, stronger and stronger and Mauna Kea is going to come up next that we make sure that we stay with the people who are have been there this whole time and have are the are the recipients of the prayers from the sacred places and are carrying out those prayers and so we need to, we need to just say you know stay uh, vigilant to that and be aware of other stuff coming up because they are trained. That man that stood in front of us today, he is trained to come down and stand before a group that is not very happy with him. And he did an excellent job, right? His little smirks were just right, and uh, you know he just stood there like, oh yeah, I'm just doing my time, but. That's, that's what's happening. I mean, that's the hard pull part of planning and trying to protect our people. And believe me, when we're doing that, we don't want people to get arrested. We don't want people to get hurt. And we want to keep it uh, going in a way that we can make progress. But it doesn't always happen that way because we might have one person in there who's going to jump in and start it going. And you have to be vigilant as to watch your leader. If your leader has not appointed that person to do that, don't follow them. <laughs> you know, pull them back off the line because they don't have the floor. 
you know, and that's our, that's our job in educating ourselves, being witnesses and being uh, vigilant to the directions that the sacred is pushing for us to have a better life. That's what we're working for, is a better life. And so I just wanted to say that and uh, do it inside. Thank you guys all for your time and all of the things that you do in your busy days. And all of these things are coming up. The Shell Mounds, the Mount Shasta, the Twin Tunnels, Mauna Kea. And we all have to kind of do what we can do. Do the best that we can. Always kind of do the best we can. But don't allow them to split the groups. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mahalo Nui Law, for driving all that way. She drove five hours, five hours to get here. You know, and that's the dedication that the people of the land have to each other. I'm so used to getting two minutes. Used to be three minutes. Hearings. Now it's down to two, but uh, but here time is on our side, and so this was a song that was sung to the the board. One of those boards that said it's okay to desecrate Mauna Kea. But this is be Mauna Kea's answer.
one day and all of a sudden I started humming and I just started humming and I was carrying the buckets because there was no water pumps there was no electricity there was no gasoline it was just the Milky Way the land and the sea and the water bubbling out from Mauna Kea Yeah. 
natural law prevails Now and forever There is one thing that will need Water Like a rose and the thorn Live with love And I hate to see it go Aloha Aina, Nico Pate. Okay, we're going to close out with one last song that we want you guys to sing together with us. Some know, some know, but it's a very famous song that Nico wrote. And um, we played this one along with the first song. I think that actually the first time we played that Mauna Kea song was actually on Mauna Kea, the day that the TMT attempted to break ground. Attempted. And they have not broken ground yet, and they will not break ground. So, the, you know, in celebration, we... Um, we, we played that song and we also sang this song together. So some, some may know it, it's a famous song in Hawaii. And um, mahalo Nico for, for writing this beautiful song. So those who know it, please sing with us. Eola. Eola. Hawaii Hawaii Lord. Thank you to Hawaii Lord and Navigator. Yeah. 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 As we travel from place to place, some familiar and some are strange.
Kathy, who has helped to put this on and hold the ground here. And we still need to keep holding the ground. You know, today is awesome. And, you know, we have to remember that it's also part of a, of a long battle that is going to keep going on. And so we need to keep, um, keep that strong because today is is part of 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 a, of a bigger picture. So mahalo. And I'll turn, turn it over to Uncle Liko. Just a very short story. Once in, in 1978 when no one wanted to hear about human rights and, and the things that my ancestors were calling us and they call us to do. Someone handed me a, a Bible. And they told me, Liko, you must know the section on what they call the, uh, what's the last part now? Of the Bible. I'm not a real kind of Bible guy, but it has to do with the prophecy, the revelations. And she gave me a book. And I threw it all off of the mountain. And said, uh, excuse me, but... I cannot understand all of the stories. Within three weeks, I had, so I had to leave Oahu, and I went to the island of Kauai. And one of the kupunas there said, Rico, you go and stay at this place called Mahaulepu. And then a great storm came. And petroglyphs that no one had ever seen before were revealed to me. And it was then that I knew why I had discarded the word when it was back to the signs and the symbols. And when I saw the colors of this lay that was given to me, it reminded me of when I was a child and I grew up at the foot of Diamond Head. And there were only two hotels there then. There was no sand on the beaches. There was just opihi and rock and fish. And as I came down the stairs to the ocean, a great huge figure rose out of the ocean. And he stood at the bottom of the stairs. And he was huge. He was like 8, 10, 12 feet. And he said to me, my name is Kaohe. I am the greatest warrior. And he was all black. All the sections of his hair and it was gold surrounding him. And he said, that, My greatest, my weapon is love. And that's the story that I wanted to share with you. And I was reminded of that when the gold and the black lane was given to me. To not forget that. That love conquers all things. So, nice to be here. Thank you, Taulani. Oh, okay, we get to sing on the campus of Berkeley and rightfully said, if it can happen here, well, you know what? It's happening. It's happening and what Berkeley once stood for, rise up again, Berkeley. Wow. Wow. I'd like to offer a small prayer. Can we, can we ask everybody to come and and, and who you into a circle for 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 just a, a very short. It's a medicine prayer. It's really the only thing in my time. Uh, I could not. I wasn't allowed to hear my ancestors speak the language and the song of the ancients. And years later, there is, there's one chant that was given to me a prayer, and it's a medicine prayer. It's very specific. So in your heart, in your mind, if there's things, one thing, many things, that I would like to offer this prayer, the essence. And it speaks about the essence of creation, that all things have an essence. The stones here, the metal, it all has a memory. And I have to ask for permission from the essence of 
situation to have a piece of it because I need it to survive. And the prayer says, well, why would you need this, Nico? Because I need to be strong. And why do you need to be strong? Because I need to be able to help others. And what are you going to do? We are going together to overcome the obstacle that is before us. And how will you do that? You will overcome it as the passing rain comes. So I offer this to my kupuna. with uh, um, from the multicultural center. The first thing that has to happen for all the women to come together. Because when the women are together, it's a good time surrounding. Mm -hmm. And I learned from the people up in Alaska, it, it was the women who gave birth. And the spoils of everything were given to the women. Because through them, they would ensure that all the children were fed in all our houses. And so I believe this means a lot. This is a great, a great thing that we, we need to Thank you. Thank you. Thank my mother. For all the for the Hawaiian students and for the Moana Nui, um, you know the Melanesian Micronesian students. She's she's just been um, she just received a position here in Cal for them. Oh yeah, you know, we've been under the oh, HI yeah. um, office, and she they just hired her recently. So we want to. Oh, yeah, Angel, thank you so much. And, and please, you know, um, you met these leaders and and the, the message they bring. Please follow these, these um, messages in your leadership as you come here to Cal. 
and remember us and our community first and foremost in the things that you do. Follow. Sorry, this is the product call though, right? <laughs> That's why I call Law to help me out. <laughs> and we call uh, this sister. Mm -hmm. Tell me about her. I think we need to give her a gift. Who, can you tell me her name? Malia. 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 Yeah. Hey. yeah. <laughs> We see the great love that Valia has for, for Kumu Pua. And we feel that, you know, it touches our hearts. And we know that she's, she's a protector that we have to care about. And, she, you know, she's also, we, we also um, want to give you our aloha. And so we want to remember that. And when we say these names, these ancient names, we call on the ancestors from this land that we stand on. And so I am blessed to be standing as a bridge between my ancestors of the past and those yet to be born. And um, it's my, um, my job then, right? It's my responsibility to stand for the sacred and to stand with these women warriors that stand for the sacred as well. In our time, we've been told that it is the time for women to stand up, that it is time, it is past the time for us, because women all over the world, no matter where you come from, have been abused in many different ways. But we look at our lands, our indigenous lands, wherever they are, and we know that what happened to our lands happened also to us as women. In our ceremonies, it tells us it is now time for us to stand and take our rightful place. It doesn't mean we throw away our brothers, our uncles, our cousins, our dads, our grandpas. That means it is now time because we have a different way of relating to the lands and the waters. We have songs for those waters and for those lands and for those medicines that men do not. It is time for this different kind of voice to come up. It is time for us as the first teachers, the carriers of the next life, to be able to do that, and to do that in a good way. And we need our brothers to stand beside us, to hold those lines when we call those lines. Many of us come from matril matrilineal societies where we are the ones that have the last voice. We are the ones, as women, when colonization happened, European men were so freaked out about women having a voice that they ensured that we were killed and our voices were drowned out. And it's no more. We stand in this place right now as strong women to say no more, that we have a voice and we stand here. So for over 25 years, I've been standing to protect and preserve the sacred sites of my ancestors. We've been traveling all over our territories, which starts all the way up at the Carquina Straits. My specific territory goes all the way out to Highway 5 in the Delta. It goes all the way down to what we now know as Mid-San Jose, and all this coastline all the way up there. So this is the land of our people. Eight different nations of people, Ohlone people, right? And so my brother that sang those beautiful songs, thank you so much, Richie. Um, he was, I met Richie when we took over a sacred site in 2011 for 109 days. And that's also where I met Chief uh, Callie and Sisk. She came and she helped us and she prayed with us. And we had the first salmon ceremony in my territory on those lands in over 200 years because my sister heard that call and she came. And we had that fire lit for 109 days and uh, Nicole was here and Kat was there and I met my sister Laura there as well. And so we create these relationships with each other. Oh, I met Laulani there too. <laughs> Laulani came. You make these relationships through this, uh, through this, we're not 
act, this protest, this protection of who we are as human beings, right? Um, but before I go crazy about the West Berkeley Shell Mound, I have some things that I have to do, some protocols, right? And when I go and I talk in front of people, I said, you know, we forget about our protocols and what we're supposed to do as human beings, because we get caught up on our phones or in classes or in our jobs or our daily life. And we forget that when, that there's many territories and that there was a way of being in people's lands as a guest. And that when my ancestors knew about those protocols, just as all of our ancestors did. And today we fly across the country and we we'll forget that every place that we go had first people and they had language and they had names for those places and they had ancestors. And so my ancestors would light a fire when they came to the edge and they would wait for someone to come get them. And when they were brought back to the village, they were feasted and they were given gifts and they gambled and they laughed and told stories. And then finally, they were able to say, what is it that you want? Why do you want to come across our territory? And then the business began. But all of this other stuff first, about taking care of the whole person, right? And so we want to take care of folks in different kinds of ways, you know? And so my relatives that have come from far distances, um, today we now, as a part of the work that we've been doing for all of these years, is that we've created the first indigenous women-led land trust in an urban area. Oh, yeah. oh. So that comes from a lot of people working together, and not just the Ohlone people, the Lashan people, but all indigenous people coming together with our allies and accomplices mm -hmm. in prayer and ceremony in order to see this dream come true, mm -hmm. right? And so I have a very humble offering, a very small offering, but these are two of the women that stand with me every day, Loa and Vicki, and they work with me to create these lands so that we can have places of ceremony, places that are indigenous again, places that we can put up our ceremonial houses, places that we can grow food, places where we can have our children, places where there is sovereignty again in indigenous stewardship. And so, and it's run by women, Ew. right? And so we're trying to figure that out. So these t-shirts that we're, some of us are wearing, um, also on the back says, rematriate the land. We're not talking about bringing back the land to men's hands, but we're talking about women because we're bringing, we're the culture bearers. We're the ones that are bringing back those things. And when the time comes, I know I can call on my sisters when we put up that roundhouse here again that has not been here in over 200 years. As we align these, these houses, these prayer houses in California, as we align those also with our sisters and brothers in the Pacific, right? And so I'd like to offer you guys just a little token from being here um, and standing with us in prayer and standing on our land today, uh, one of these t-shirts. And so uh, Vicki and Law is gonna help us um, pass those out to, to folks. And I, um, so I wanna bring up uh, uh, Pua. Um, there's a few different sizes, so not too many. Please don't get offended, huh? Until these mounds grew over thousands of years. It's older than the pyramids in Egypt, older than any city in the world. So this very place that's right here in what we now call Berkeley lives underneath the parking lot and it has never not been a sacred site. Through colonization and through running from terrorism, my ancestors have always gone back and prayed quietly, not with hundreds of people there, but doing our responsibility. Our obligations are, are sacred. And so two and a half, three years ago, when these developers decided that they wanted to build on top of it, we had to stand up and say no. And we gathered people from all walks of life who stood with us and wrote letters and made people stay up in meetings until 2 a.m., just like all of you two when you're standing for the sake of it, right? We did that. We had prayer ceremony there. 
we brought leaders there to pray from all over the world. And people there from all walks of life, Christians and Muslims and Jewish people, Buddhists, people that drum, the Korean drummers, the Tibetans, Hawaiian chanters. We had all of these people that came and they sang with us and they prayed with us and they did this work with us. And so, as a result, the developers backed out after being told no twice by the city of Berkeley. Even after they invoked this brand new law that allowed them to go through this whole process without an environmental impact report. And so now the owners of the land still want to build and they're suing the city of Berkeley in order to do that because we have this really crazy idea in this country about private land ownership. The foundation of this country is flawed. It's built on the idea of the doctrine of discovery. And the doctrine of discovery says and allowed colonization of all of our people. It says that we we're only half human. And that was held up in a Supreme Court in 2005 against the Oneida people. This is not old law. It's still being used. Right? So our Constitution, the Constitution that people go by on this land is flawed. It's, it's a sexist, white supremacist, horrible doctrine that was based on a sexist, white supremacist doctrine of discovery. But our ancestors, so we are now finding ourselves as our Hawaiian brothers and sisters, as Kaolin, as many other indigenous people, fighting using the laws that they've created to protect our sacred. And so when we went forward to say no still, after they sued the city of Berkeley, they said they didn't want us, the Lashon people, to be a part of that legal, that lawsuit. The owner said no. We had to actually fight in court to say that we could, we deserve a place at the table to talk about why it's important. Because the city of Berkeley can't speak on behalf of us. They have no idea what the sacred is to them. They said no on good terms because of their legalities, but they have no idea what it is to be tied to a land forever. And so today, while we were chanting and singing and, and holding up these prayers, I got a text message from my lawyer saying that we had been included in the lawsuit. So these miracles happen because of us, because we come together in prayer, because we lay those things down, because we are humble in our heart and we know what we're supposed to do. I want to thank you all for being a part of that, part of our lives, and that we continue to do this work across all lines so that we can fix these fractures and we can become whole again as human beings and we hold these sacred sites sacred again oh. 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 Yes. away from me <laughs> that just made this whole trip more worth it than oh. ever just to hear that oh. Oh. thank you You know, recently Karina received an award. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to say it. <laughs> but, but this is more about alliances than, than an award, but the award was pretty amazing as well. But uh, I happened to be in New York at the same time as uh, Karina was going to arrive there to accept her award. And, you know, I don't know my way around New York, you know, but I made sure that I was going to be there to surprise her because it matters. It matters that we show up for one another whenever we can in whatever way we can. And this even beats that. <laughs> you know, I have to say, my heart is so, I, I've just watched these 
spokespeople, chiefs, leaders of these lands. I've learned so much. We all have. We learned so much about what it is to never give up because giving up is not an option mm. when you are tied, when that is your genealogy and your place and, and it's not an option but to be there for the daily, to see the daily work and the way that we have to move in this world. So I, I'm just, I'm so moved to to tears and, and I'm overjoyed and and I think we're going to carry that home. We're going to carry that home because every time there is a win for one of us, it's a win for all of us. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I count that as a pound of win today. I'm not sure how long we have, but I want to honor Nidia's yes. question. And uh, I, I don't know how long we have. And nobody else had a question um, earlier. And so perhaps this is going to close it. I, I want to go around the room first. And and, and Laulani can come up after to go around the room. Go ahead, go, go ahead and do it, but, but we still got a little bit of... Okay, so I'm going to just cover the other question that was um, asked of us in, in, a, um, in a way of uh, chanting and poetry and all that it weaves together in that vibration just uh, to touch on the genealogy of the Mauna in the form of a short Oli. It's not like by far we could do a whole semester class on the genealogy of Mauna Kea or any of our mountains, right? So um, I'm just going to do four lines of a chant. It by far is not going to fill in the hundreds of lines of, of many other chants that would speak of our Mauna. But in 2015, I'm going to honor um, the reciting of this chant on Mauna Kea. So uh, a young man, if you watch the YouTube videos of uh, the attempts of the, um, the groundbreaking in uh, was it September or October? October of 2014. Man, we could tell you some stories about how that all occurred, but we're, we're not going to. But we find ourselves uh, at the base of the mountain, and you can watch all the videos in the world. They're, they're all out there of the stopping of that. It was, it was very important that we halt that groundbreaking. It, it was essential that we halt that five countries on the Mauna can break ground. Um, and, and that occurred. And, and leading that was, uh, I, I don't want to say leading that, but a, a young gentleman, young warrior named Lanakila Manguel found himself going up the Mauna. And a lot of others went too. But the reason I bring his name out was because he started to do this chant a lot. And then he started teaching it. And then people from here and all over were dancing it. And it was the shortened version, a little verse in a long chant of the genealogy of the Mauna. And in 2015, on June 24th, there was one line in particular. We were standing in lines on the mountain. Some of you may have been there uh, with us that day. And, uh, you know, the, the babies in the crosswalk and the kupuna held the line for like over two hours. And we were all standing above that in our own lines. And, and as the um, officers were getting through the lines, there was one group that stood on the mountain and did this chant for they say over an hour, just as little four lines, and did all the motions and went home and were bruised when they went home. But they would not stop chanting this chant of genealogy. And the stopping of the, um, the police occurred at their line. So the chants and the prayers and the dances are powerful. Yes, they are. They are. They are 
our secret vibration genealogical link. So this particular chant says, O Hanau Kamauna Kea, O Puai Kamauna Kea, Hanau Akea, O Akea Kikani, O Papa Valinu Kavahine, Hanau Ohoku Hebahine, Hanau Haloa Heli, Hanau Kamauna Akea, Hekeki Mauna Akea. So I'm just going to offer this as the shortened version. Yeah, some of you know it in here. <laughs> oh, hanau kamauna akea. Oh, pua e kamauna akea. That's how it goes. You see, you see, that's what I mean. It, it started to be taught everywhere. So it says, oh, hanau kamauna akea. The mountain of kea, wa kea, is born. It, it started as a bud, you know, because it's the uh, it comes out of the sea, and and sprouted, and it became the mauna of the sky father. O wakea kikani, wakea is the sky father, the father of the mauna in this particular chant. Papa valinu, the mother. So you, we either know, we know Papa by many names, but Papa Hanaumoku, Papa Valinu'u, Haumea, there's so many names for the mother. Hanau Ho'ohoku Hevahine, the whole star constellation. Isn't that so amazing? It's burst forth is a star constellation. And out of the joining of the star constellation, because we know we come from the stars, and Wakea burst forth the first column and births forth Haloa the man. So we come from the Mauna, Haloa Kikalu, the staple food, and then us. Hanauka Mauna, and then we rejoice. Hanauka Mauna Akea, Ekeki Mauna. It is a child. It is a mountain. It is the firstborn of us when we recognize that chant as part of our genealogy, the Mauna, the Kalo, the Kanaka, the man, the human, and we are born of this mountain, and therefore that is our genealogy, who we descend from. So Mahalo for asking the question. We have brought not just the Mauna into the room, but Wakea, Papa Valinu, Ho'ohoku Kalei, Haloa Kikalo, Haloa Keali, Haloa Kikanaka, Eyala, Eyala, Eyala. So we just have a little bit of um, a little uh, golden golden globe. It says, "I stand with Poliahu and protect Mauna Kea." And um, it's not much, but we would like to present those first to Chief Kaleen for, for traveling all this way and um, where, where is she going? Oh, she's right there. Oh, there she is. <laughs> she gave me a gift this morning. <laughs> this is just like that gift oh, this yes, morning. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We stand with Poliahu, Mahalo, and um, and of course, and of course, we are so grateful for Corinna. I mean, just it goes beyond words. It's so she's so amazing. You know, the, from the day that I met her when she was leading a stand to protect. Um, the Sogorate, you know, and when I went to that place, it was really like, 
wow, we've been here, you know, you can see in that place where the vase, mm. you know, that, that, that we've been to that place before and it was like coming home, mm. you know, and there wouldn't be a home to come to if we didn't have this kind of leadership to to keep that home fire burning. That's right. Oh. 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 In this land. Mm. And so, you know, that's why we need to support the home mamas of, of every land. And when we can do that, you know, when the, when, when the, the, the mothers of the land, the, 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 the people who really have it to, to, to hold it together and, you know, if leaders knew what they were, what was good for them, they would learn many things from this kind of leadership mm. that empowers. Right. You know, it doesn't. Um, it's it's not a matter of dictatorship, mm -hmm. but you know, it's a strong. It's a strength, yes. and because that strength is rooted in simply what is right and what needs to go forward yes. for the future, and mm. that's 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 that work. It's like great work of constantly giving birth, mm. constantly giving birth to a new way and to 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 the old way in a new way, mm. Mm. and. We just really appreciate that so much, and we want to we, we want to mahalo that. Mm -hmm. I just want to add that we pray at this moment mm -hmm. you have many miracles, mm -hmm. Mona miracles. Mm -hmm. Oh, this day four. Oh, we just want to wait. 
sing it, okay? See, Nico's never heard this song. So <laughs> it's a new thing, but it, it like totally just came out. So we just gotta kind of do our best. And so if, um, you know,
おいしい。